In 2007, a struggle over a divisive Soviet statue set the standard for a new form of Russian interference in the affairs of foreign states. Plans to move the bronze soldier in Tallinn led to riots, outrage, and the first cyber attack ever attempted on an entire nation state. But the full story of the bronze soldier affair is only becoming clear now, 13 years later. New research has connected the dots to reveal how these events formed part of a new style of coordinated interference in which misinformation and manipulation were used by Russia to stoke division. It should have been a wake-up call for the rest of the world, but most of us failed to listen. For many Estonians, the statue of the bronze soldier is a symbol of Soviet domination stretching back at least as far as 1939. On the 23rd of August of that year, Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, secretly dividing Europe into zones of interest, with Estonia assigned to Stalin's Russia. The statue, built shortly after the war ended, reminds many people of a period of poverty, repression, mass deportations and forced ethnic changes within Estonia. But for others, especially Russian speakers, the bronze soldier represents the proud patriotic victory over Nazism in what Russians call the Great Patriotic War. Since 1995, this sentiment had been increasingly stirred up among Russian speakers outside of Russia, thanks to the Russian government's renewed commemorations of the Soviet victory on the 9th of May each year. The statue of the bronze soldier embodied and inflamed these divisions in Estonia. By 2006, the government had no choice but to remove it for the sake of public order. Preparations for the removal prompted a coordinated backlash from the Russian state in January 2007. Questions were raised in the Russian parliament and President Putin publicly criticised Estonia. Meanwhile, in Tallinn, semi-clandestine meetings were taking place between Russian-speaking activists and Russian diplomats. In April 2007, the situation exploded into two days of riots, exacerbated by an avalanche of critical Russian news coverage, accompanied by fake news stories, some of which employed doctored photographs, a tactic that had rarely been seen since the Cold War. New data reveals that the majority of the rioters were young Russian-speaking males. Some Russian speakers received text messages before the riots offering them money to protect the bronze soldier. Amid the internal crisis, a series of cyber attacks began on Estonia's public authorities, banks and media. Although the attacks failed, they represented an unprecedented attempt to disrupt daily life across an entire country. Thirteen years later, the events of April 2007 can be seen as a turning point for Russia. In June that year, Putin formalised the creation of the Ruski Mir Foundation to bolster the activities of Russian speakers outside Russia. And using different forms of hybrid interference against foreign states has since become an established Russian tactic. Today, fake news, foreign meddling and manipulation are part of the fabric of everybody's daily lives. Now, this research has connected the dots about what really took place in Tallinn. We must all learn the lessons and heed the warnings. Read the full report at icds.ee.